Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to respawn your player. We're going to be using a empty game object to represent a start point, and whenever our player falls off the edge or runs into an enemy, we'll spawn them back at that specified point. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So this is part two of our advancing rollerball series. In the previous part, we created an enemy, so if you missed that, be sure to go back and check that out. Once again, I'll link Unity's rollerball tutorial in the description below. And our starting point of the previous video was the end point of that video. So to go ahead and begin, we'll open up the player controller. So since we'll be respawning our player in two different instances, the first one being if they fall off the map, and the second one being if they run into an enemy, we want to create a function to respawn our player so that way we can recall that code in those two different instances instead of copy pasting the code in both of those places. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a public reference to our respawn point. So again, as we talked about in the previous video, we do public here so that way we can add the reference inside of the inspector in the editor. And this is going to be a transform, which is going to be the location and rotation of an object. And we're going to call this respawn point. And then now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom and we're going to create our respawn function. This is the function we'll be calling whenever our player falls a certain distance off of the map or gets hit by an enemy. So we're going to do void, which means it's going to be returning no value. And then I'm going to call this respawn. You can give the function a name of anything you'd like, but respawn makes the most sense to me here, so that's why I'm calling it that. But you don't have to follow my name scheme if something makes more sense to you. So what we want to do inside this is just take our character and put it at a position. But the issue with that is since we're using forces to move our character, the velocity of the character will still be there when we move them. So if we only move them to that respawn point, then their velocity will carry with it and the object will continue to move. So we need to make sure to zero that velocity. So to do that, we need to take our rigid body, which is from the rollerball tutorial up here. And then we're going to get our velocity from our rigid body. And we're going to make it equal to vector 3.0, which is just 0 in the x, y, and z. And now that our rigid body's velocity is 0, we also want to make our angular velocity 0. We're a sphere, we're rotating, so we also need that to be 0 as well. So again, rigid body, and this time it's going to be angular velocity. And we're going to do the same thing where we do vector 3.0. And now that our velocities are zero, the object shouldn't be moving by the time we move it to the respawn point. But just to be safe, what we're going to do is take our rigid body and call the sleep function, which is just telling the physics engine to stop processing this specific rigid body for at least one frame. So now that we're positive that our object won't move at all whenever we restart it, we can go ahead and take our transform, which is the object that this script is attached to. And we're going to take the position of it. And then we're going to take the respawn point and we're going to take its position as well. So what this is saying is take the position of the object that the script is attached to and make its position equal to the respawn point's position that we put a reference to inside of our inspector. So that's our entire respawn function. We're zeroing out any movement and then moving our player to that original position. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is scroll back up below our start and we're going to add our update function. I just like my start and update to be together. It doesn't actually matter the positioning of your update here, but I like it to be below my start. So that's why I'm putting it here instead of just continuing down at the bottom. And what we're going to do inside update, which is called each frame, is check to see if our player has fallen below a certain threshold. So in order to check that, what we're going to do is create an if statement and we're going to take our transform.position and we specifically want our y position. This is the height of the player. And then we're going to check to see if it's below a certain threshold. So I'm going to pick negative 10 for my threshold. This value is going to depend on your map, but all this is saying is once my player's height is below this specific number, in my case negative 10, I want to send the player back to the start. So depending on your map, you may have to fiddle with this value. And then if our player does fall below that negative 10, then we want to go ahead and call our respawn function. And now the last thing we're going to do inside the script is handle when our player runs into the enemy that we created in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and do this below my onTriggerEnter function. So it's a void, and this is going to be onCollisionEnter. 
And what we're going to do in here is going to be similar to what you did inside of the onTrigger inner function in Unity's Rollerball tutorial, but we're using onCollisionEnter here because our enemy object isn't a trigger. So we're going to do the same check if collision dot game object dot compare tag except in this case we're going to see if it's tagged as enemy or whatever tag you end up giving to your enemy you just want to make sure this is identical to that tag and then inside this if we have collided with an enemy we're going to go ahead and call our respawn function again so again what this on collision enter function from unity is doing is checking constantly if this object that the script is attached to has collided with another object and if it has then it checks to see if that other object's tag happens to be enemy if it does then it respawns our player so this is all for the script so make sure you save and then go back to scene and then after it finishes compiling we want to go ahead and create that enemy tag so the way we can do that is by clicking on our enemy, going over to the inspector, clicking on the tag portion right here. We're going to add a tag, just like we did for pickup, but this one is going to be called enemy. And then we can go back to our enemy prefab, and you can click this little arrow right here, so that way you go to the base prefab instead of the one in the scene. And then we're going to give it the tag of enemy, so that way all of the prefabs we drag in will have that same tag. And then we can go back to the scene, and we'll change this one to enemy as well. And the reason we had to change that one to enemy is because it was already in the scene and had been adjusted. So now what we're gonna do is go over to a wall. So we're gonna drop down walls. I'm gonna click on west wall and I'm gonna actually get rid of it from the scene. I'm not going to delete it because I only want it gone temporarily, but I wanna be able to show you that going over the edge will in fact respawn the player. So I'm just going to deactivate it. So you can click right here on this little check mark, and as you can see, it deactivates it in the scene without you having to delete it from your hierarchy. Whenever you want it to come back, you can click this again to reset it active, but I'm gonna leave it deactivated. So again, I can fall off the edge. And then what we wanna do is create an empty game object or you may have a specific model that you want to put here that will be your respawn point, but mine's just going to be empty, and I'm going to call it respawn point. And then I want to respawn where my current character is, so what we can do for that is find our player, and then I'm going to click on its position, and right-click copy, and then go back to the respawn point and right-click paste. And now if I click on the scene view, you can see that it's sitting right where the enemy is sitting. So now whenever we spawn our player, it'll respawn right back where we started the game. And then finally what we need to do is go back to our player. We need to go down to our player controller script. And then as you can see, our respawn point that we added as a public variable is now there for us to add a reference to. And so we're going to go over and click on this little dot. And we're going to type in respawn point. If you would prefer, you can also click and drag, and it would work as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and Control S to save my scene, and go ahead and click Play so we can test. So I'll go ahead and run off the edge, and once I hit that negative 10 threshold, I spawn back on my original placement. And then now if I go towards the enemy, as you can see, once I've collided with them, I also go back to that original placement and my velocity gets zeroed and I no longer move. So as a recap, we used on collision enter and tags to determine when the player has hit an enemy. And then whenever that happens, we respawn the player to its original placement. And we also created a check to see when the player falls below a certain threshold so we can restart them if they go over the edge. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, but we also stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Friday. We have a game on the Google Play Store called Blast Off, and we have an asset pack of kids' toys on the Unity Store. We also have a Patreon that has a YouTuber supporter tier. If any of those things interest you or you would like to support us in any of those ways, I will link all those things in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.